Hello world and welcome back to another exciting Applied Energetics video where today we're going to be covering everything and anything that is to do with wireless both using add-ons as well as the vanilla Applied Energetics mod. Since of course we're playing with Applied Energetics we're going to start with the vanilla versions first and the first thing we're going to need is a new block called the ME Security Terminal. This is made using an ME chest, a 16k ME storage component, an engineering processor, four pieces of iron and two glass cables. This will give you your security terminal. As well as that, you're going to need some component parts, one being the wireless receiver, which has made you with a flux pearl, quartz fiber and three iron ingots. Now, in order to make the quartz pearl, you just need a load of flux around an ender pearl, basically. And then we can use a couple of different things. The first thing we're going to actually have is the wireless terminal. This is made like so with a wireless receiver, an ME terminal and a dense energy cell. So we'll pick up one of those. But you can also jump straight to the upgrade, which is a wireless crafting table, which is using a crafting table, a calculation processor, and then one of these wireless terminals. Now you can make this in a slightly different way as well. If you wanted, you can go straight to the crafting terminal. If you use the crafting terminal, very similar to before, but it's up to you whether you want to just upgrade what you have or you want to go straight to it, but it's up to you. And the last thing you're going to need is a access point. This is made with a wireless receiver, a calculation processor and a glass cable. So here we have got two or, or one, one of our very own basic systems. We've got a controller drive and inside we have uh, some items, some random items. Now I'm going to throw these away because these don't actually have any power in and we have these two that do. Now, in order to get this to work, you need to set up something like this. We've got our controller, our terminal, and so on and so forth. In order to actually get power in these things, you actually need to set up a charger or any other type of charger like we have here. That will just work away. As you can see on the left-hand side, it's slowly charging up. Then you right-click again to get it out. It works with uh, both terminals. Now, in order to actually access your system, you, this is where the security terminal and your wireless access point comes into play. Let's do the access point first. The access point is where you're essentially going to be sending your transmitter or terminal to where you are going to be able to obviously access your system, hence the name. Now, this takes up one channel, and when you right click on the inside of it, by default, it's going to say that you can have a range of up to 16 meters away. That means once we're set up, we can't go any more than 16 meters or 16 blocks before we know longer have access with our terminal now there is a way to increase this but we'll cover that in a second as you can see also uh, at the moment it's using 8 ae or uh, 16 rf per tick when uh, this is powered now in order to connect to your system itself you are going to need the me security terminal so when you go in here there's a couple of things we can do um, to simply just connect to your system wirelessly all you have to do is simply put your terminal inside of here you see it says unlinked when we hover over them put them up in the corner here and it will now link to the system we're going to do these with both of them and then inside of these terminals what we can do is with the wireless terminal first we can see we now have access to our system now all the buttons work the exact same as if they were in the regular terminal all these buttons on the side here as well as with the crafting terminal of course you can craft and everything works now your crafting terminal is going to look slightly different to this now if you're not playing with any add-ons then you're not going to have these view cells and you're not going to have this little icon down here you will however still have these boxes but they'll be up the top over one item is not going to be able to go in there and that's an energy card the magnet card and quantum bridge card that you're seeing here is from an add-on so yours will look slightly different i'll throw it up on screen now of what yours will look like this extra is just because I have a mod. Now, you, these buttons do work here. If you find that these buttons aren't working on the side here to make your system a little bit taller or whatever, you might just need to actually turn down your GUI because uh, as you can see here, we can make it a lot bigger now. Very, very big if you so wanted to, but I'm someone who just likes to have their, uh, their GUI rather large. In fact, the largest. Going back to the security terminal though, there's some things that we can do with this. This is a way of allowing other people, more with multiplayer this is going to be, allowing other people to access your system via the wireless system or actually even with your terminals. Now first you are going to need a biometric card, which is one of these. Now, in order to craft this, you need two pieces of iron, engineer's processor, some gold and redstone dust, and by default, it's not selected to anything. Now, the thing is with the security terminal and the fact that I'm in uh, single player, when I place this down, I become the default user of this and I can actually overrule myself with anything. But if you were to give this to someone and hold shift, right click, or they were, it would then become defined. As you can see, it now says Mondays 3. If I slap this inside our security terminal, I've got some different things here. We can now, uh, we can basically restrict someone to being able to deposit. So if I have this selected, they can't do any of these things here. They can only put things into the system. 
as in this uh, ME terminal. They can't take anything out that would require the withdrawal. Then we have craft. This is allow you to initiate crafts using all CPUs and auto crafting. Uh, click the video up in the cards if you want to see a video about auto crafting. And then we've got build. The user can modify the physical structure of the network and make configuration changes. This means they're allowed to actually uh, actually change things around the thing. Now, because I am obviously um, the person that owns this system, I can't actually overrule myself, so I'll still be able to break this. Um, regardless and then the last thing is being able to modify other people's security tar um, other other people's things in the network other biometric stuff I've given myself everything now you should be able to just place it inside of here but I believe because I am um, the owner of this it's not gonna let me do it um, so that's how the biometric th uh, thing works but good to have these if you're playing multiplayer um, because this is going to work with both accessing regular ME terminals as well as it's going to work with doing the wireless stuff as well as you can see even though I've set myself for everything uh, sorry even if I set myself to say let's just say I'm only allowed to uh, deposit yeah I'm only allowed to deposit I can still take things out as you can see because I am obviously the owner and if I take some stuff I can put it back in see so that's how the security model works. In single player, you're not going to have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is the linking of devices, as you can see here. So now we know how these terminals work. Obviously, the wireless access, as I say, if you go too far, you're not going to be able to actually use it. There you go. It might flash up, but it will tell you you're out of range. Inside of here, we've already discussed all these buttons here on the same side as the regular terminals. But now these wireless access, we want to actually increase our signal. This is where we're going to need the wireless booster. The wireless booster is made with Ender Dust, Flux Dust, Certus Quartz and three pieces of iron and we get one of these per craft or two of these per craft sorry now all you have to do is inside this wireless access point you've just got to simply slap it in each one is going to increase your uh, amount by a handful of blocks or one block it depends how many you have now you can get a full stack of these and place them in here uh, but if you just do them one at a time oh, and then mind I've done it all of them uh, the max range as you can see is 528 blocks as you can see so they do increase that it does slowly increase more than one block it depends how many you have it I think it's based on logarithms and how this is calculated so it's a bit confusing but the maximum is 528 blocks in range and as you can see as well the energy uses goes up as well so the further away you need to be uh, the more range you've got to be but what if you want to go further than 528 blocks and you still want to use this well there are two options one is you run one of these cables 528 blocks away or even further than that since uh, technically you can go double because it will hit back radiuses and dyna and stuff like that and then you have to set another wireless access point and boost it again that's how you would do it one way the other way is by using bridges now bridges are these things right here they're a bit late game but they allow you to traverse tremendous about amount of space as well as dimensions because with this system of just using these terminals and the wireless boosters it doesn't mean you can access them in the nether so this is why you are going to want bridges the bridges are made up of two different components the first one is the quantum link chamber made with quartz glass and more fluix pistols crystals and then we've got the me quantum ring which is a little bit made out of different things we've got logic processor energy cell engineers processor smart cable dense smart cable and four pieces of iron now you are going to need eight of these in total, sorry that's wrong, you're going to need 16 of these in total and two of these because as we say this is a link, this is just one of them, you're going to need a second one wherever you want to place it. So for this one we've got here, all it is is simply you just take one of these and one of these and these can be horizontal or vertical and you just place it around in a circle. You know it's built correctly where when you place the last block it turns into a multi-block as you can see here. Now by itself these aren't linked. But for this you are going to need two different things one of which is going to need power to your controller because as this does use up a channel um or uh, anything that goes through it is going to use up channels and that will be your supply point as well as that inside of it you are going to need one of these little icons here which is a quantum entangled singularity in order to make a quantum entangled singularity or two of them you are first going to need a matter condenser the matter condenser is made with regular glass, iron, and some fluix dust, and it is a very simple thing to work. It doesn't need any power in itself, but you will need inside of it a 64k ME storage component or bigger. And all you simply have to do here is just feed it items. Now you can select different things here, so we have this currently set to singularities. You can switch it to just simply dump stuff, and it will start binning everything, so you can use it just as a regular um, 
recycling bin or something. Let me just take them out for now. Uh, what you can do is turn it into matter balls, which is this here. Now, matter balls can be used to basically just make different types of paint. Nothing too fancy here. Um, yeah, but you can, it's just, I don't know what you can use these for really. But I imagine you can use it to dye your different cables. And then we obviously have the singularity. Now, the singularity, as it says here, it's 256,000 items you need to burn in order to get one singularity, as you can see here. Now, the storage component is literally as it says. I am currently using uh, creative um, ME cells to give this an infinite amount of stone through all four sides. Now, this is very slow. All six sides are full with acceleration cards. That's why this is going a little bit faster, but this is a slow process if you have one exporter and you're just doing it basically from cobblestone from a quarry or something. So it does take quite a while. Uh, you can place things in manually in here. It will just bin anything. So I've put plate these in here. It will go straight into the stored system or into our singularity or whatever we have her defined. Uh, right, so we have the singularity. Now we want to turn it into our quantum one. First, you're going to need TNT or an explosion. Now, something inside of Applied Energistics is tiny TNT, which is very nice. Just requires two gunpowder and two certus quartz. And what you need to do is you need to take a singularity and you're going to need an ender pearl. So with your singularity and your ender pearl, all you want to do is blow up your tiny TNT. So if we get ourselves a redstone torch here, we'll place this here. That will blow up and that will give us a pair of these quantum majiggers now all these pairs make sure you don't lose them these pairs are basically going to be your links that's why they're made in pairs now you can rename these to whatever you want you can separate them you can rename these in just an ordinary vanilla anvil so you can don't get confused about where goes what uh name them whatever you like um, but just a reminder that with the singularities, you can use any explosion. You don't have to use reg uh, tiny TNT. You can use regular TNT. You could use a mod that does other types of explosions, a nuke if you wanted to. Uh, you could even actually, you know, use a creeper if you wanted to. Now, I've already demonstrated this. Uh, I've already got one thing set up here, so I'm not going to reuse these. But here we have our quantum link here. Now, our quantum link, first we're going to want to do is we want to link to this system now because this system is slightly different, of course. So we want them to be different. And inside of here, we have got a fair few different items. So if I right click this here, we can see that we're now connected to this system on both our terminals. We don't, well, I suppose we only need one terminal. Now we have got our access point here. It hasn't got any upgrades. So let's just put a few in there. Why not? And uh, we can access this terminal here. Now we've got this linked up to our quantum link. This is where our power is coming from. And as you can see, we've got two channels. That's because on the other side, we're using up two channels. Now something to note with this quantum link bridge, you can only do it on these side pieces. You can't put any channels on the corners. It will not work. Work. And another thing is that the quantum link can only send 32 channels through at a maximum. So you can put one dense cable worth through this system. There is a way around that, but that is using P2P chant tunnels, and that'll be in a different tutorial. So stay subscribed to see when that video comes out. So inside of here, we've got our one quantum singularity, and then away away, if I go through my handy little portal here, we are now going to be a thousand blocks away. We have our other one. This is built um, horizontally, so which shows that it doesn't matter. And here we've got our other quantum entangle portal. So here we've got our terminal to show that we are linked here you go it's the exact same and then we've got our another access point here so even though i've got my wireless terminal because i'm next to this wireless access point i'm a thousand blocks away it means you don't have to run on that cable if i go over here now you can see that i'm out of range so it is this one that i'm actually connecting to now something to note is that with your other bridge you need power as well so make sure both sides are powered you'll know you'll have power when you've got these flashing dots on the sides here if there's no sort of flashing dots then you know you have not got power now, something that could happen to me, it could be a bug, I'm not too sure, but my very first quantum pair did not actually work when I put them through the bridges. So if you find that the first set doesn't work through the bridges, it's not connecting properly, make a second set. I know it's another 250,000 blocks you'll need to put inside your matter condenser, but a second set may work because that's what worked for me. Very confusing. I made them both legit. I didn't just spawn them in, so I had that link and I had that weird bug. So just try a different pair if the first pair doesn't link up. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this quantum entangle loop and we're going to go back because something else that's really cool about these bridges is that we can actually go into the nether with these. We can go to any dimension with these and that is the best thing about these bridges. We have here another one built up and inside of this, we're going to put this little one in here. Now I've got power coming from the bottom there. As you can see, we've got one channel, so we're linked up with another access point. And now my wireless crafting table works in here and we can see everything. We can take everything in and we can take everything out. It's very good. Use it in the end. Use it in the nether. Use it in Twilight Forest for all you want. 
Now, when it comes to vanilla AE2, there's only one more thing left to show off, and that is the energy card. The energy card is made with an advanced card and a dense energy cell, and you can put two of these inside of your terminal here. So if I right click down here on the sides, you can put one or two in here, which gives you an upgrade in your energy so you can last for longer. 4.8 million is what you can have when you have both upgrades, and you'll only get two upgrades by default in vanilla by default you will get 1.6 million without any upgrades but that is everything when it comes to vanilla ae2 the rest of the, what we're going to show off today is to do with add-ons i'll explain what the add-ons are and what mods they come from but these are other or better ways to increase your wireless abilities inside of ae2 our next upgrade is the magnet card the magnet card is made with a lapis lazuli block a redstone block annihilation plane an advanced card and five blocks of iron now this card, all it simply does is if we open up in here, we can place it inside where our energy is over on the side here. And when you place it inside of here, you will have two different buttons. One is a filter and one is a on and off. Essentially, you can have off, you can have pick up to inventory and you can have pick up to ME. Now, this can be a little bit buggy, but I believe it is just my pack. So I like to hold shift and right click to open everything up and this will change things a little bit better. So if I place down, say, let's do it with let's do it with our biometric card, place our biometric card on the floor here. Be able to shift and right click to open this up. If I turn this on, it should pick up to inventory. Just like so. See, sometimes it's a bit buggy. You had to do it again. And then it'll go straight into our inventory. If I uh, then open this up and go to ME and we'll throw this on the floor again, what's going to happen is this time it's going to pick up. If I actually goes to ME, uh, if it sets to ME, we can pick this up. It will select and now it goes into our system. Now, something we can do here is we have our filters. This is what it looks like by default. We have up at the top, we have our pickup side and on the bottom, we have our insert side. So what we can do here, say we have we have a white list for our biometric card on the top here for pickup, but we'll have it as a blacklist on this side here. And what's going to happen is something very interesting is if we have this set to pick up in our inventory and we'll drop this down, what's going to happen is it's going to pick up for us, which is great. But if we now have this actually set to pick up on ME, we have this selected here, we're still going to get the magnet effect, but it's not going to go into our ME system. Now, the reason it's not going to go into our ME system is because it's blacklisted on our insert insert down here basically means insert into our me system pick up essentially means our inventory if we had this placed around the other way that's whitelisted that's blacklisted it's going to be a similar thing we're going to have this here it's going to open up this should still turn into me never mind pick up is for all pickup it seems so there we go that's how that works you learn something new every day. So this is all blacklist. If I have this to whitelist, there we go. It instantly picked it back up and it's gone into our, our ME system, as you can see here. So the top is for picking up in general, whether it's inventory or your ME system. And down here is purely your ME system. Now, something cool you can do is that if you want the top to be copied on the bottom, you can say copy to insert. That way they're identical. As well as that, if we had something down here, we can copy it up to pick up as you can see here. Now, so the last thing we can do is that if we have different ones down here, you can actually switch the two around if you so wanted. And that's everything when it comes to the magnet and its filters work. It's a little bit finicky, but I believe it is just my pack that is making that break. Now, the next upgrade you can get is the Quantum Bridge card. This is made using a Flux Pearl and a wireless receiver, and you'll get one of these per craft. Now, the way this works is, as you probably guessed, it's a way of actually connecting your wireless terminal to your Quantum Bridge card. Now, you are going to need to actually have one of your paired Quantum Singularities. I've taken the one we had from the Nether, so we can connect to this one. So if I open up my little thing here, we can see that I've already got one inside. What I can do now is just simply put my Quantum Bridge card in here, as you can see. And then if I fly out of range, I'll still be able to access my system, as you can see here. Now, it doesn't matter how far away I am, because inside of this, we can see that we only have two ranges. 16 blocks is all I can go. But since I have this quantum bridge card, it allows me to go anywhere and still access it. As well as that, with the quantum bridge card, it means I'll also be able to connect this in other different dimensions as well. So it's even more powerful than the bridge itself. You'll just need one bridge connected. You can do everything through wireless and you don't even need the wireless access point. Now that is everything when it comes to upgrading your terminal itself. Most likely you're going to be using the crafting terminal. Oh, something I have just remembered is that with these crafting terminal, now I'm not sure if this is to do with vanilla AE or it's because of one of the mods I have, but I can use this as a curio slot, which means that I can place this inside here as a backpack. 
Now there are different controls for this that you can do if you go into key bindings and categories and go to applied, if I could spell, you have to set these. Now I have got mine set to B here. I have had to deselect every other thing that's B like JEI, not JEI, journey map and uh, sophisticated backpacks. Uh, but you can set this to whatever you would like. Now, as you can see here inside of here, you also have wireless access pattern terminal and pattern encoding terminal. Now those two aren't a part of your um, game. They're not a part of Applied Logistics 2 by default. They're also part of wireless crafting terminals, which we're going to move on to next. But just to demonstrate with the curious slots, if I press B, it opens up everything inside of here, which is very, very cool and very neat. But we're going to hold this down here for now. Now, as I say, these are our, our other terminals. We've got the pattern encoder, which is made using a wireless receiver, pattern encoding terminal, and a dense energy cell. Who would believe? Now, this needs power as well, holds the same slot. Uh, amount of power and it can go into the curious slot now you need to link these as you do with the other things and power them up with the charger the other one is our pattern access terminal made with a similar way but with an access terminal and again this could be if it's actually finished this could be with a curious slot and you have 1.6 mil of power now the cool thing about these though if i actually get these because i've already got these linked up and with power as you can see here now we are out of range that is because we don't have any grafting cards in it so let's put some boosts in here just so we have a bit of range so as you can see we've got our different encoder here with this we could also have the energy card and a quantum bridge card but no magnet card so you will need another one of your pairs if you want to link it so if you wanted to have all three terminals your crafting terminal your pattern encoding terminal and then your pattern access terminal to allow you to put your patterns in and out of different machines that you have set up you will need three different quantum bridges uh, made up with three different pairs however there is a better way the last way you could do this is with the universe Universal terminal. Now the universal terminal is made with any two of these other two terminals put together. So I have in here the pattern access terminal and the pattern encoding terminal and this has made one of our universal terminals here. As you can see here it tells you which terminals are installed and because you've got two terminals worth you've got double the amount of power that can be stored. So if I take this out of here now inside of this it's going to look a bit different. We have a couple of bit of extra things. One of which is you get four different cards now which means if you put more energy cards in here you can store up to nine 0.6 mil of power as you can see here which is pretty cool this way you're also only going to need one magnet card and one quantum card because that works inside of here now all the buttons are the same here when it comes to the pattern encoding cards and the way to switch between terminals is you simply click open next terminal as you can see here and that's all the same as well now the last thing you could do is actually you can put your crafting terminal in with it as well so you can have all three of them in there in total and you get that another boost in power with 4.8 uh, million ae as you can see there and we place this in here you get another two upgrades so now we have six cards in here you can have the magnet card you could have four of these and you could have your um, last quantum bridge card it goes a little bit off screen but that's because my gui is so big and this way you will only need to have one link which is really cool so that means the magnet works uh it seems to be a little bugged for me again i think it's to do with my pack and config but the magnet card does work on this and you get up to uh, a lot of power if you, you didn't have the magnet card in here let's see you get up to 14.4 mil of power if you just want straight power you don't want to care about the magnet and or, or the quantum bridge link then this is what you've got but i imagine you probably would want the quantum bridge as a minimum now that is everything when it comes to the mod ae2 wireless terminals now there are other ways we can actually increase our wireless ability and this is moving on to the mod ae2 infinity boosters now we have two different types of boosters here as you can see they are very very expensive the first one is the infinite range booster this is made using three of our regular ae2 wireless boosters a nether star two eyes of ender and then three netherite ingots and these do exactly what they say on the tin if we go over to our wireless access point in here we can take out the boosters and put our infinite range booster in here and this does exactly as you probably think it gives us infinite range we can go absolutely anywhere with this now we don't need a quantum bridge at all we can do everything just off this one little icon however you cannot do this across dimension when you use this thing so even though it's very expensive it might still be a little bit cheaper if you want to go across dimension by having one of these bridges so that's something else to do there however as you probably noticed there's a bit of an upgrade as well if you get four of these infinite range boosters four more nether stars and an eye of ender you will get the dimension card now this is going to do the exact same thing but it's going to allow you to go into different dimensions so we have the dimension card this gives us infinite range again inside of the overworld but if we go into the nether as well or any other dimension it will 
allow us to use it. So that's when that becomes a little bit OP, I think. I think I prefer the use of bridges. It makes it a bit more fair. But if you're really late game and you can't be bothered with the faff, this is a good sort of cheat mod to get in considering it's just two items and when you're late game you've probably got enough to get all of these in total what's that seven nether stars no problem at all now there is one more way to do your wireless system say you don't want to use quantum bridges you want to do something a little bit earlier before quantum bridges or something that's a little bit easier to use something you can use is an me wireless transceiver now this transceiver is from ae additions it's a little bit different it's just one block it's made with some flux a diamond two energy processors and some wireless receivers you only get one of these per craft but the cool thing about this is that it's just simply a block this essentially works as a quantum bridge but better and for cheaper so inside of here we have just got simply crimson nylium here and what you can do is simply when you right click on here we have got ourselves an me system i've just simply named this me main system because say we can have this as our main hub now you can name this whatever you want and you can have as many different systems as you want as you can see here and you can delete them as such now what i have this set up here is at the moment we have currently set to channel a at da even though i've just deleted it so what we want is to have our me system and we want to save that and that switches it to our me system here as you can see now the me system it can only travel or this wireless receiver it can only put 32 channels through the system as you can see we have three through going through the system at the moment and i'll show how we're doing that here by default when you place this wireless transceiver down this button over here is going to be on subscriber mode subscribing mode means that you have clicked the subscribe button no bad bad joke but it means you click the subscribe button but no what it actually means is that this is essentially going to be your receiver it's subscribing to the broadcast that you will put out so your first main system where you want to send your system from you're going to want to change that to uh, broadcaster you want to select the system name that you want to use and then click save as you see here you can also public this or private this if you so want i have this set the public as i'm in a single player and it doesn't really matter but that's now broadcasting over here we have got three different other types of uh, blocks here one isn't powered however and then this is where our other channels are coming in so on these all i've done is select our system here had it as subscriber and then saved and we've done that on three different things now the three different channels it's using up is actually these terminals as you can see each three of these terminals are seeing the inside the exact same disk drive but the what's actually happening is these blocks themselves they don't take up a channel which is pretty cool so if i break that here as you can see this is still receiving but only two channels are being taken up now so it's only things that are actually linked now again similar to the quantum bridges uh, as it says you can only put 32 channels through it but you can get around that using p2p tunnels which is something we're not going to show off today now something that's probably a good idea with these transceivers as well i do not believe there is a single distance you could do with these um i believe you can go anywhere in the world but just make sure that area is chunk loaded now something i thought i'd do just to give it a test is that these transceivers they do not work across dimension as you can see here you can't even see the other uh our aim main me system when it's set up inside of the nether it's still using up a terminal here because uh, obviously we've got a terminal point here but um, yeah, we can't connect to our system here, which is why it's not reading. But for today, that is going to be everything when it comes to wireless inside of your ME system. It's a little bit confusing. I know we've gone over a couple of different mods on this, not just vanilla AE2. But I thought it's always good to know your extras that you have available to you. And you want to play to your playstyle, of course. Because some people, they don't want to do with the grind of getting our quantum bridge or putting wireless cable access points with cable going all over the place. So I want, to play, want you to play however you would like to. Now, if this video did help you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe that would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live now i've been talking a lot about p2p tunnels when it comes to this video but in the next video we are going to be showing how those p2p tunnels actually work because they are very op and you can send a lot of things through these quantum bridges using them but until next time guys take care